Now, in order to achieve full potential and equal access to and participation in science for women and girls and further achieve gender equality and empowerment of women and girls, the United Nations General Assembly in 2015 declared February the 11th as the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Despite progress in ensuring opportunities for women in STEM fields, women and girls continue to be systematically underrepresented represented as users and leaders in the fields of science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Now, less than 30% of researchers worldwide are women, with too few women in decision-making roles and higher paying STEM jobs. The gender gap in STEM has deep implications for the future of global economy. As the fourth industrial revolution starts, the jobs of the future will be driven by technology and innovation. And if the gender divide in STEM is not bridged soon, the overall gap is likely to widen. And joining us live in the studio is Itoha Egbedio, who is the manager, uh, quality, health, safety and environment at Daystar Power Group. Good to have you here. Thank you, Amaka. And it's the International uh, Day for Women and Girls in Science, and that's why we have you here. So first is first, at what point did you discover that you are passionate about sciences? For me, I don't think there's a point in my life that I decided I wanted to always do science or engineering. I've always been enthusiastic about learning. I always was curious as a child, a hyperactive child. And I had older brothers who were all in science class, three of them. And they kind of are my mentor still did, especially one. And they kind of like encouraged me to learn. Mm -hmm. And I liked the idea when they talked of boys, Lord Charles, and I was like, I needed to do this. Okay. And I got good coaching and mentoring from family, friends, and I read a lot. And I realized that's what I always wanted to do. All right. Now, um, you studied chemical engineering, oh, yeah. first degree, <laughs> and oh, yeah. second degree, you did uh, engineering at master's uh, uh, level, process engineering at master's level, and currently working uh, at renewable energies um, office, so to speak. Now, how do you deal with you know, the long lasting, let's say, stereotypes of there are certain jobs supposed for men, or men are in better? In should be in certain position as opposed to women. Okay, so that stereotype was way long ago. Okay. And are you saying it's no more there? Okay, now for me, I would say it's not there after one thing, you've proved your competence, you've shown that you could actually do it, and you've actually shown your skill level. I remember very early on in my career, I had to, even from IT, industrial training as a student, and most times you're the only girl, maybe you're two girls in a group of, a lot of guys. You give assignments, we have to always go back to be absolutely sure to prove ourselves more. And that you're a girl, people are like, okay. So you have to be sure that you're exceptional and that there was something really different about you. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, okay, and also there's a great grace. I kind of like had great teachers and mentors, even from growing up and even throughout the industry. And I like to ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. So it helped. All right. Now, let's take a look at a bit of figures. Now, at present, uh, less than 30% of researchers worldwide are women. That's according to UNESCO. And uh, only around 30% of female students select the STEM-related uh, fields in higher education. What can be done to change this narrative? OK, and that's also going to be in line with the SDG goals go fight for gender equality. And also STEM actually counts for girls especially. I think one thing we can do is to change the narrative on how people look at STEM courses. Mm -hmm. So when people think you're a nerd, or you, they assume people in sciences and engineering are all nerds, and they, are not, they don't have fashion flair, mm -hmm. they don't have the swags, mm -hmm. that's one thing we need to change about young people. I met a group of young girls, and they're like, an engineer, like, OK. <laughs> And I'm like, they're like, ah, oh, you don't wear boots. Say no. <laughs> you don't look like them. So sometimes I like to label myself as lifelong learner, fashion rebel. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we need to actually change the narrative and let people see a field as attractive as teachers, mm -hmm. teachers for young children, teachers as even as parents. We need to show our kids what's fun about science. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons that made us engineers, doctors, geographies and a whole lot of other fields where because we had interest and people to call and build those interests. A lot of kids have their multi talented. Sometimes yeah. I'm sure growing up my father thought one time, oh she's a good orator, she'll be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Later oh, she's caring, she can be a doctor. Mm -hmm. But I chose what I wanted. 
And I feel that every child has a right to choose what they want, but you can also help bring out other skills they have so that they can choose. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, all the most important thing is having a choice. We cannot push our girls into STEM if that's not what they want to do. Were your parents so, disappointed in you? Oh, no, my mom is really proud. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right, let's move ahead. Now, over the past 15 years also, the global community, they've tried to engage women and girls in STEM-related fields, right? They have encouraged them. But we still see very little of gets, you know. Uh, yet, women and girls, they're, they're still excluded so to speak. Why is that so? Even after all of these efforts from the global community, we see that there's actually uh, uh, efforts, but we don't see so much of the results. I think sometimes we need to localize our efforts. Okay. Now, if you have a solution that works in part A, it does not work in part point B. Mm -hmm. So for Nigeria as a case study, we could make it localized in line with how we do, in line with our culture, our norms. I remember one of the first times I ever loved being in the lab was XS1. We actually get to be in the lab. I do this, I think it was Venturimita or uh, Venia Kalipa reading. First physics practical and was, in my mind I was like, okay. I think Albert Einstein touched this and... Mm. Then I had role models I really wanted to be like. For me, my role model was out of this world for a female. There was Marie Curie, she won mm. Nobel Prize. And then first time reading about her, I was like, okay. So we need to actually give them role models, people they can see. Mm -hmm. So we need women in STEM in Nigeria to actually sit up, walk up, and actually localize this effort. Let them see who they want to be like. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, as we all did growing up, we'll mirror that. All right, thank you so very much. We'd like to keep you, but this is all we can take oh, yeah, in the no interest problem. of time. Uh, so that's uh, Itoha Egbedion speaking with us.